You know, guys, when the women like you, it's usually for your tools. Maybe for your ability to use it. I don't think mine likes me for that. I think she likes me for my hammer. You are actually here to pick it up right away. Uh, well, I've only been waiting for... Well, what next to you, call on Monday, say it was a rough, they need a meeting to get it together, so they can come pick it up right now. It's still sticking there. It's not surprising. What's the box? I mean, I like free stuff. This is attached to it, so I just assumed everything on This is going to roll into you. It It'll roll until it stops. <laughs> yeah, because, like, there's the head. Oh, maybe that's all the parts because they didn't reassemble the head. Yeah, the cam is out of it, so I'll be the cam and everything else. Okay. No you problem. Sure? No. But I'm pretty sure. I know there's no cam in it because he told me they were going to box up the parts. So I'm pretty sure that's where the parts are. But yeah, normally they don't attach it to it unless everything on the skid belongs to you. Yeah. Still might have to move some stuff. We'll see. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Well, looks close. Might have to just give the skid a tap. Uh, you're gonna jump this, yeah. Perfect. So, okay, perfect. Thank you. There we go. So it's in the truck. Now we're going to run it all home and uh, look at it all. And then we'll start uh, setting everything up. I haven't got the engine stand out yet. So we got to set up the engine stand, get all that done, uh, which doesn't take long. Need keys to start the truck. Keys. <coughs> I've had this nagging cold now for a week and a half. So there we go. Uh, picked up block in the back. We're going to head back to the house now. Uh, we'll get it out of the truck and I'll probably break the skid down in the truck and then we'll get everything put in to the garage. Um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Okay. We'll bring a little up. Bye. So even though I briefly cleaned in here, I still don't have a ton of space, but it's coming in here. Got to open the door, get the tires kicked out of the way. Uh, I got to get the engine hoist and lift that motor off of that dolly there because I need it. And then we are going to bring in the PZ Struzer. <laughs> All right, well, we're just going to cut the wrap off of this. There you go, Maple Ridge store. Got to save the uh, invoice since somebody opened it and then it was, yeah. Didn't realize that or I would have had it closed in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook it through the, one of these holes here and one up on the front, lift it up. It's gonna set down on there. We got the cylinder head parts here, stapled shut nicely, which is great. <clears throat> Trying to get the, the handle open here. Oh no, the baby bird's inside. Oops. Yeah. 
to I thought it said Tokyo in there for a second. So no, 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 this is no Tokyo drift. We're just gonna take these and you know neatly put them inside. There we go, neatly inside with half of the blade is in there too. Yeah. Okay, that can stay there for now. I'm gonna deal with the block first, then the cylinder head, because that's real heavy. And well, that's heavy too, but this is heavier. I think I could lift it up if I had to, but stupid is not my middle name. Nope, generally it's my first name. So we'll try not to do things like that. Okay, let me get this done. Before I put it on the engine, uh, engine stand down there, I'm going to tape off all the essentials. I mean, I'll even tape this here off here uh, so I can paint this in first. I'm just taping off the back of the, uh, where the oil, main oil seal goes here so that it'll be sealed or, well, this will all be painted. Yeah, I'll get to that. Now I should probably be, be using high temperature paint, so I figured, why not? I don't have much left, so I'll just kind of, this is all sealed in anyway. Done. Okay. So I'm going to let that set up. It's not too cold in here. It's not too warm in here. And of course, you know, I got paint on myself, which, you know, what else is new, right? So we will let that cure up. I'm not going to touch that head right there or the accessories. Uh, I might open them up and spray them down with oil so they don't get a chance to rust or anything. Um, that's the company that did her right there. I had some reservations only because dealing, not to put the company down, but Lord Co. Parts and their parts distribution stores can be somewhat problematic. Yeah. But their machine shop and their cylinder head guys, so far, pretty good. That has had some work done to it. Same as this. There's a sleeve in one of these cylinders here, and we'll show you that here in a bit. Um... I just want to get this all painted in so that when I put the, uh, you know, engine mount on the back and I lift it and put it in the stand, this is painted so I don't have to try and repaint it again. Because before I start getting oil all over it, I want to paint it. And the same will be for that, sorry, that cylinder head too. I'm going to get that one painted as well. But I'm running out of time now. Now the crunch is on. Not because it's winter, not because it's almost Christmas. It's because the writers, WGA, have got a deal. SAG Actera, Actera, SAG, the writers, you know, or sorry, not the writers, the, the actors uh, union, they got a deal. They got two of them. They got one for the video games that they were out on strike for. Sweet. And they got one for film and TV. Sweet. They got... So anyway, there's the block, there's the cylinder head. The parts box is inside, not in you, but it's in the in the house there. I've been, you know, getting grief from the missus there because she'd like to see that box gone. And I was like, I'm waiting for this. That box is $2,200 worth of parts. This here is $2,500 in machine work. This block is hard to find. That cylinder head is impossible to find. Broken ones, yes. Good ones, hard to find. That magna fluxed out, perfect, no cracks. This one needed a sleeve. That ended up having a problem later on, but I'll show you that later. Okay, well, that looks uh, plenty good to me there. Everything's painted in. Okay, got it up under the stand. A little bit of an arm wrestling match with it. But hey, this is a pretty good little uh, engine stand here. Look at this, you know. She just rolls so nice. I'm back, but this thing came out so nice and clean. I can already see it. Let me spin it around. All right, you would think 
how shiny this pipe is right here that I replaced it. Never did. They did such a great job in cleaning this block up. Let me get it unwrapped here and I'll show you. Well, I was going to paint it. And then, I mean, I, I painted this back here. And then I thought, you know what? I kind of like the raw steel look. So, with their cleaning at the bath when they, they take these in and clean them, I just clear coated it. And then, of course, I used some heat to heat the block up, you know, get it some heat in here and get it warm. And then um, I think I got it warm enough. Uh, the paint seems to be drying out a bit. I mean, it's not going to be perfect, but if this is the worst part of it, I'm looking pretty good on this. I like this. Uh, what I do have to do is open up the box of parts that came and make sure that they returned the piston that I sent down there for sizing. So let me go get that box right now. So there's the new piston. It, sorry, not 2.5, 0.5 cut open. So there's the arrow to mark towards the front of the motor. You no, know, you just sit there. Thank you. Ah, uh, yeah. Let's just put that there. Nice. Hopefully we didn't overbore. Why don't you put the piston rings in there? She'll sit in there nice and tight. So what I've got to do is I've got to get rings, put the rings in, push this down in, get the gap so I can get measure the gap, and then set the gap on the rings. Um, I may tape all this over and go around these edges and just deburr them. Maybe. Probably not. Probably a good idea to just leave it alone. So I'll just cover this up again. Even though I mucked the tape up a little bit, just a little bit. The actual block is kind of warm, which is good because it'll heat up and, you know, the paint's all cured off here, which is good. So that looks, I don't know if you can see it. But it's shiny. It's nice and shiny. Anyway, let's put that guy back in the box. We'll just kind of leave this here and we'll be done for tonight. And uh, we'll see about what happens tomorrow. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Just giving a blowjob to the block. Nothing to see here. I'm just giving the one PZ a blowjob. I'm drying paint. You dirty bastards. Drying paint. I clear coated it. Look at how shiny it is. Needs a couple more coats of clear coat, but I mean, I kind of like the raw look. Don't you like the raw look? Don't you like it when you get it raw and you get a blowjob out of it all? I mean, that's pretty cool, right? Blowjob and raw. Hmm. So I taped over, obviously you can see, taped over all the, you know, spots. I didn't tape over underneath because, you know, if if the paint is getting in underneath, well, it deserves it. That's a pretty tough thing for it to flow upwards. So anyway, that's what we're doing right now. The one PZ is home. The garage cleanup went well. It's cold in here. I need heat. I'm out. Okay, well, reassembly time. Found the oil squirters. I'm gonna mount all the oil squirters in because they're below, above the crank. You'll see in a second. I got the girdle undone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop the girdle off, set it off to the side. Uh, and we'll get to putting stuff in. I opened the garage door to get some fresh air. <coughs> 
<coughs> we'll cut that part out. Uh, clean the oil squirters up. We'll get them put back in. Get them torqued in, set in, tightened in, and ready to go. I'm gonna quit talking now. I'm gonna push the door closed a little bit. There we go. Okay, so here's what we're doing. This girdle is gonna come off so I can get at to the oil squirters that are down inside there. So here's the oil squirters. Yep. Spray can lid out of the way. Okay. So there's the bottom girl off. See, yeah, right there is where the squirters mount in. And there's five of them. So I'm gonna proceed to put five squirters in. You got a mounting pin, so they only really go in one direction. And they're all the same. Yeah, they're all the same. They don't really have a crush washer on them. I'm surprised they don't have a crush washer on them. <coughs> it's that time of night when my cold wants to raise its ugly head and go, Remember me! So they go in there, just like that. Maybe I should be waiting to put these in. I don't know. You guys have rebuilt PZs all the time, or 8Zs, or Toyota Land Cruiser or diesels. Let me know. Am I doing this backwards? Should I maybe have the crank in there first? Or the pistons pushed in first? Here's the last oil squirt we're going in. Probably have a torque, and I'll have to go and look it up and see what the torque is. Let's get the squirters in. There we go. Now we're recording. Okay, we're back out of here the next day. Got to turn the heat on, get some warmth into the garage. I'm going to pull the girdle back off. Um, it's got some other bolts that I've got to, you know, look for over there. Because I've got other girdle bolt, bleh, 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 bolt, bolts that go in here. But first what I do is I gotta pull these off, pull the girdle off, right? Pull this girdle off, plastic gauge, every one of the uh, mains, spec torque them all down with a pad with the pattern. And before we, you know, throw it all back together, uh, before I even do the uh, um, the torquing, the number four here, one, two, three, four, I'm gonna put the thrust bearings in. I got a new set, I'm gonna put those in as well. And we'll grease everything up. But I'll plastic gauge the whole thing. Then after the plastic gauging comes out good, hoping, anyway, um, then we'll torque it down and I'll find the the other girdle bolts because this is a four bolt main girdle girdle and then there's there's a bolt that goes out here here don't know what goes there oil pumpage in there and i think there's a gasket that goes down a seal that goes down in there too i gotta look at the books um we won't put it together and get it get the bottom end buttoned up I want this motor to last a long time with thorough abuse. Well, not too much abuse anyway. Anyway, let's get this going. Okay, I'll show you what I'm looking at. I got a pattern on both sets of bearings so they look decent. So what I'm looking for is 50.05. I'm not sure if you can see this or not. 0 0.05. So, since they stuck up here, if they're less than 0 0.05, that's great. If they're more, that's a problem. Nope, they're less. Okay, so you see the 0 0.05? 
right there, second from the top. It can't be wider than that. And they don't look to be. They look to be less. So on the plastic gauge, it says you measure, or in the book, it says you measure the plastic gauge at its widest point. So I'm pretty sure we're good. I mean, yeah, I think we're good. Let me spin you around and look. Take the crank a little bit to bring the plastic gauges all to where we can see them. And it says measure at its widest point. Pretty sure at its widest point, she's hitting 50 there. She's hitting 50 there. This one's a little skinny. Let me show you. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being skinny, but there's a time and place for it. But she's only just slightly skinny. So, hello. This one here is the same. It's just a tiny bit over, but I'm allowed to go. Standard is 0.554 millimeter to 0.036. Well, 036 goes a much wider. Too wide, and you lose your oil pressure. So this one here, right there at its widest, right where the oil is too, which is nice, is right at 50. This one here at its widest is right at 50. So I've got two. This one and this one, they're a little bit narrow. They're a wee bit narrow. Not terrible. Hard to get my fat fingers in there. But I mean, what do you think? I don't think it's too, too small. I think it measures out probably being a little bit narrower than it should be. But it's not a 70. Oh, maybe it is a 76. I don't think so. So this one here, we can't get my fingers in there. There's your 50. And there's your 76. Well, I got two that are closer on 76. That one's a 76. And this one here is just a little bigger than 76. But then we go to this one. And she's not a 76. She's a just underneath the 50 and this one here at its widest I mean if we look here just under 50 she hits 50 and she stays 50 so yeah I'm not an engine builder what I like it a little fine they weren't uh, spitting oil so ugh. I'm thinking I'm put it back together park her all back up to spec worst it does is that oil starves a little bit and I have to redo the crank I don't think that'll be an issue now that I've said that though 
it's probably gonna oil starve and completely grenade. Maybe I should get a charge. Anyway, I don't I don't think they're bad. I think the the clearance is a little bit big, but I don't think it's bad at all. So I don't think it'll be an issue. Um, it does have a good oil pump on it. It was making really good oil pressure. And new bearings, it should do just as good. I don't think it'll be an issue. I hope. <laughs> I some research online there, and the spec for the crank is 036 to 054. So I am just one or two of them. I think only one of them is a little over five zero. Put it in the 5-4 mark. <coughs> I don't think that'll be an issue. Everything else is uh, at, at an 050 mark, which is good. So I'm going to put the girdle back on. I'm going to torque it all back down. I'm going to look for my other bolts. And we'll put those in and we'll get everything else cranked up. We're going to start on the cylinder head. I got all the parts. Hoping. I got all the parts. Hoping. Uh, take the cam. Loosen it up. Pop out the shims that are wrong. I got to go find my shim card. Thanks for reminding me. Um, change out the two valves. Lap two valves in. Watch a water jug slowly fall down behind you. Um, new uh, rocker cap that is toast. It's got to come out of there as well. So I got to do one of those. Um, yeah, I got a whole bunch of little parts. Little parts. Expensive little parts, but little parts. So we're going to start, uh, or well, what's this wee stuff? You're along for the ride there, Kimo Sabe. Supposedly, I'm part Shawnee, so maybe I can get away with that? No, probably not. Anyway, you're along for the ride. Let's give this a go. Try and keep the cardboard here as long as I possibly can. Uh, anybody want a mint? No? Uh, can't eat. I thought I'd ask, at least. You know, at least I'm being polite, I'm asking. I need a little chunk of board. Let's go to one. And, uh, you know, I've got one somewhere. Fuck to find it where. So for our next trick, we're going to do a valve. Oh, I think I see why they said these valves were done. So you look at the edge here, the edge on that one. That one, if you can see it, didn't, uh, it's got a nice bevel to it. So she's pretty much worn out. Uh, to give ourselves a fighting chance though, I am going to lap this. I do a lapping compound. Or is it laughing compound? With me doing it, it's a little bit of A and B. I'm going to put a little bit of sluber on here. And I'm going to slide this bad boy right up inside there.
a nice sound. Like she's seating all the way in. And here's my trick. clearance. I don't have a lot of clearance. Or a lot of clearance. I'm going to shove that up there like that. And I'm going to put some laughing compound onto her. Just like that. I'm going to try and keep my dirty mitts out of the motor now. The most I'm going to do is push in here. Oh, she just slid. Yep, I'm not going to get a really good bite on that end of the stem. So we'll just be very gentle with her. Gingerly, somehow, I want to keep the, the the chewing compound out of the top of the head here. There we go. Our lapping tool is off. I'm going to push the valve out. I'm running my finger around the end of the valve, feeling if I chewed the end of it up because. Really, I'm hoping I have it. Don't think I have. There we go. That looks suitable. Yep, yeah, I can see where it set in a nice little groove in there. Really low on the valve, which is good. Let's clean out the other side of the chamber over here. That looks good. So now what I'd like to do is put it right back together. So what I'll, the other thing I want to do is I want to try this. Yeah, feels pretty good. what I want to do is smack it off of everything yeah I'd say it looks like I get a good print around the outside I'll do the next one and then I'll show you what I'm talking about
Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to start gapping rings. Assembling the pistons. I had a trip to the dentist today. Love that. Can never explain how much the stress is when you are scared of the dentist. But yeah. So the trick is, um, get a piston, which I have over here, assembly lube, no one's paying me so I'm, I don't care if you see it or not. I have two assembly lubes. I need one piston. So there's my brand new piston with assembly lube and that goes right down there, right? Well, obviously that's the wrong way. But we don't want to drop it in there yet because then I won't be able to fish the little son of a thing out. So, you take your piston rings. Old head bolts. They're torque to yield so we don't, we don't ever use them. Open up our box of piston rings from R.I.K. Rings. Never heard of them. Not that I would have heard of any. So... One, two, three, four, five, six. No, we don't have six. There's no way. One, two, three. Oh, they did. They gave me six. So I have a spare set, so don't break any. You take one set. I'm going to put it there. Put the rest back in the box if I can. Uh, it says, for diesels and some new gasoline engine, two-piece oil control ring. With coil expander, step three, well, step one. Read the fitment instructions carefully before pitting piston rings. Well, all right, sure. That doesn't uh, explain a bunch. We can go with that. All right, nice. New rings? you guys looking at here so this is the oil ring there yeah there we go there's the oil ring and one or two of these is the top ring And they do say 50 over on them, too. Now, I don't see one of these as being a scraper ring. So I'm going to do... Come on. Set the other ring right here. I'm going to take this ring. And I have never done this before. Piston. Push it down in there so it's straight in the bore. And then you would measure the gap. So when the ring is in the bore, the gap in here. You measure it with feeler gauges. Let me go get them. Alright, so feeler gauges. Gloves got to come off. Coffee has to go in. Mm. Very good coffee. there and we're gonna open up the iPad because that's where I have the shop manual hidden okay so the piston ring is in there and right here is our ring gap up at the top it's saying that standard end gap is 0.27 to 0.54 millimeter and it does have it in inches too 
So we're going to find the appropriate uh, gapping tool here. Well, it's not the gapping tool, but... <coughs> It's a, a touchy-feely gauge. Okay, so our tall one, 0.27 millimeters to 0.54. Well, I have 0 0.508 millimeters here, and she don't fit, which is fine. So let's drop down to, say, a 0.4. Not quite. Very, very close. So our lowest is 0.27. Let's go 0.356. And, of course, my lighting is sucking. So I've got... 0.35 still can't get a gap in there this is what we're measuring before we start filing 0.27 is our is our standard lowest still can't get a gap there's 0.279 and drops right in there let's go up one size and make sure that the 0.305 doesn't fit by itself without the 0.33 stuck in there with it so the 0.33 305 does fit. We'll make sure the 330 fits. There's our gap. Maybe one more. We'll try one more. 356. So I got 330 and this is 0.356. The top number is in inches. And in inches we would be 10 0 1 0 6 to 0 0.02213 there's 30 we just don't want to reach 5 point uh, 0.54 Point five four, three three eight, three three eight is where she gets tight. So that's our top ring. Put in the next one here. Okay. I'm gonna get oily hands, so we're gonna get rid of these because they're now just an annoyance. Drop the. Piston down in there evenly. Yep. Don't drop the piston head first into the bore because we want it out later. Now, the second piston ring should have a little bit bigger of a gap. It should be between 4.0 and 6.2. So, remembering what we had here on the first one would be super handy, which is why it was 0.38, I think we had. This ring should be bigger and we want again we want 40 for the number two ring so let's skip up to 40 right there we got gap let's 432 432 fits let's go 457 Four, five, seven fits. This is good. Your second piston ring, from everything I've been told and read, should be a bigger gap than your first one. There we go. And we're at four, four. And where'd it go? We're at four point point four eight. Let's go up to 50. 50 fits. Perfect. That's what we want. And our biggest one is 0.62. So let's, let's jump up to 0.61 because that's the biggest one I got. And that does not fit. Okay, that's all right. 5.8. We'll work backwards here. There's 559. 559 five, fits. So we are right between everything. We are at 5.559 millimeters uh, on the bottom 
and I believe the top ring we were what uh, I think we were 0.28 or something like that but I can recheck that one so put this here let's pull this one out get rid of the glove this is where a pen and a paper I should have that so I can remember what I had because I have a great memory for a lot of things but numbers aren't one of them I believe we're at five five nine. No, we had five eight there. So five eight on the bottom ring. I'm just going to reconfirm the top because I don't remember. Well, you should put them down in the bore, but I want to kind of be able to see what we're doing here. So what I'm measuring is right here on this gap. This one, so we got... 5.8 for the bottom ring and the top ring I believe I was out at 2.8 and I can go as big as 5.4 five, five, so we'll try 3.8 3.8 fits let's go 4.0 four, 4.0 zero. Four, zero fits 4.3.2 just fits Four, five, seven fits. Four, eight, forty-eight. It's getting tighter. Forty-eight and fifty-four is our biggest, so we don't want to cross that. So here's fifty, and fifty does not fit. So I'm going to hold these gauges out. That'll go with that one, and the bottom oil rings are these guys here. There's our five piston rings. Slapped with the gap and we got her measured. They're not all 100% uh, tight, tight tolerances, but they're a good tolerance. I don't have a problem with the tolerance that they're at. So that's pretty good. I'm going to assemble pistons. Each piston is marked. Let's see which one this is. This is number two. Let's put that in number two hole. Let's find number one now. Your number one. There it is. I got it. I got it. It's right here. I do not have a ring expander. Here's the other thing we have to look at. Okay. So in the manual. You're still here. All right. Well, you're hanging on for the show. Probably going to fast forward through most of this. And there's 17 pistons. 17 pistons. All done with new piston rings, new pistons. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. Very, 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 very little blunt. So here's what we got. All the pistons are done. They all got new rings in them. All new piston rings board out block i mean this is a little diesel she's not a big one she's just a little baby baby so the next thing i gotta do before i drop these in is i gotta put the grooves these grooves here 
in the right order. Not necessarily in order, but they don't get lined up because you'll just have a complete blow by. So one will be, you know, they're all offset from each other, but they're all kind of, they're all kind of put together this way. Oh, you're not even in the right spot. Look at that guy. There he goes. Hey, to you. You're not being nice. That wasn't very friendly, are you? So, I line them all up like this. And then when I get ready to do them, it'll just be a matter of grab each one as individually as I go to drop them in. And turn the rings to an appropriate position. I do have to get a... Um, you know, piston collar thingamajig to, you know, squish the rings so they go plunk in. But, I mean, how's that look? Like, five brand new piece stones. You know, they're going to sit right down in there nicely. I don't want to drop them in there because it's going to be the end of the connecting rod on the crank down there. We don't want to do that. So I'm setting them just like this. And tonight, I'm going to put them in. Maybe you'll join me. Maybe you won't. You could bring coffee. Jeez. Oh, I have coffee. I got to be back. I, I forgot I had coffee. I got to get out of here. There you are. I can see you. I'm going to do a feeler gauge on all the rings. Make sure that their pistons are decent pistons and they don't got a lot of slop in them. So... The first one ring groove is 050 to 095. And let me tell you, she's a thin one. So in here, it doesn't really give you an explanation of, you know, measuring it. But they do show in the picture here, holding the rings in. And they're flush like this. So when the piston ring, the top one here, is pushed in, not be below the surface, just just in and flush, it does pull up tight on the 050, which is 051 millimeters here. Yeah, can you see it? Yeah, right there. Okay, so here's the first ring. Here's my 1051. I bring the piston ring out, bring it back in flush, and it's grabbing the, the feeler gauge. So that's good. It is saying should be 050 to 095. So once this is compressed all the way in and around, you know. We'll just get it back in there again. And you compress your rings. And it may sit a little deeper, but that's pretty good. So I, I'm happy with that. The second ring, number two, and the oil ring is 06 to 10. So we'll go up. There's a 70. There's a 15. No, that's a 58. O five one. So on this ring. Slide that little sucker in underneath. Not working with my dominant hand, so this is kind of backwards for me, which is all sorts of fun. And it's in your way. I'll go on top of the piston. It's just easier. So then that sits in. And she's, she's starting to grab. So it's pretty tight. She's snug, snug. So 
we'll go with the 051 here again and then I'll go down the row in underneath bring her in flush not a hundred percent tight there not terrible that one's way better that one's good and that one gets tight right there what's going on here huh something going on wrong with that one Maybe. all right I'm gonna try to get the head onto the motor I don't like the last one I where I oops. Ah, yeah. maybe not talking about not ah. screwed up the last head gasket would probably be a good idea getting it out of this secondary <clears throat> cellophane package Yeah. So they took my dowel pins out, but they never shipped them back. So I'm going to line the get head gasket up best I can. Then I'm going to take the head and just slam it down on top. Because why do it gently? Yeah. It kind of looks okay. I do have head bolts. Um, I got the old ones here too, somewhere. I could use two of them right now. Oh, they're there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a head bolt in the front of the motor, or front of the head, and at the back of the head. Hopefully that will help me to line it up. Hopefully. Don't be such a little Nelly, my God. Just drop the washer. So I've got the cam set for TDC. The block is set for TDC. Hopefully, we've got them both right. Let's do this so I don't get covered in oil. Good idea, practicality wise, but bad idea application wise. Whew, that's heavy. I forgot how heavy this son of a bitch was. I gotta make sure I drop it on and don't smack uh, an open valve. That's heavy.
it's not good because it's sitting on a fucking valve. I need them goddamn fucking dowels that they took out. It's not heavy. All right, try this one more time. I got the head broke down again because you know taking it apart about five times is fifteen. Five. Fuck, I always can't. But I took the cam out of it, so hopefully that'll make it a wee bit later as I kick it back and play it out of the way for a four twenty nine. Hopefully, I'm not thinking it will, hoping it will. I go wrong in so many different ways. Oh, this thing just isn't getting any lighter. See if I hit a hole. Nope. <laughs> it was a hope. I mean, it was really a hope. Oh, well, maybe. Gasket looks like it's in the right spot in there. I, I really think I should get the dowel pins for this one. Oh, not even. She's not even in the hole. Nope. Okay, let's take it back off. Doll pins are going to be having to be ordered. So, for now, I'm waiting for parts again. But these ones I might be able to find locally. Um, I'm hoping. Uh, I'm hoping Toyota will just be like a, a has it's a doll pin that they like at the factory and they stuck with it through the factory builds. Hoping. Whatever. I'm out of here. Bring you in a little bit closer here. So I do have. Excuse my fat headedness. I do have all my head bolts set in. I cheated and I got a dowel pin. That does not look like a new head bolt. That's not a new one. That was a sneaky one. I don't know how you got in there. I got lots of new ones over here, so let's just take them out. Oh, I think that was a guide. Yeah. Uh, grease, 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 grease. Grease the threads. So I did this with all the head bolts. A little bit of grease on there, and I put a little grease at the cap. It's grease down there. Squeeze my big ass around here. And then I literally just plunk them in. Now, I'm not torquing, I'm running them in. Because I can't remember the pattern. 
So I'm just going to run them down, not tighten them, just run them down. And I believe it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Like I said, I'm just so she's not tight. So there we go. Head is on, not torqued. Uh, I will torque it, but I'm going to put the cam back into it first so that I've got the cam set in. And that'll probably be... Well, that can be right now. Let's do it. I'm with it. I'm, I'm, I'm for it right now. Let's go. He ya motherfucker. Should probably push this thing towards you over there, though. Okay, so... I got my... Socket for the cam. Grabbing the old cam shaft. Perfect. I don't know what that sound is. That sound clip comes from somewhere. I just don't know where. Is it perfect? Probably not because I'm the one doing it. There are much better engine builders than me. I am novice in experience. So you're asking what the hissing sound is? Look over here. Here we go. So I'll be reapplying more assembly. I also have another tube of it right over there. That's going on there like so. And I'm going to rotate that sucker. Just like that. I'm going to do the same thing with the caps. I'm going to hose them out and re lube them all. I don't care if the brake cleaning runs out. I do not want dirt in this motor. Like I said, more assembly lube. Set that right there. Take the bearing cap wrapper. One. One bearing cap. Ah, 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 ah. Two. Two bearing cap wrapper wrappers. Make sure that the numbers are all this way. Three. Oh, lube. Never put it in dry, folks. Gentlemen. Be nice to you ladies, not dry. So before I tighten things down too, I'm gonna to lube every one of the lobes. You have to lube the lobes. And of course, when I say tighten them down, I only mean is to draw them down, not torque them. Torquing will be done later. And six. The sexy cap is coming. Okay. I'm gonna put a lot down here on this end one. Just because it's the sexy one. And you always want to treat the sexy caps the nicest. Number six, bearing cap. Now these are known, they don't have bearings in them. The bearings are built into these caps, except for this cap, where you have to have bearings put into it. We're gonna run them down, same pattern. Anyway, standing, it looks. The only reason I'm switching from this one to that one when they're loose is so the threads catch. Now, somebody's going to correct me on here. Or I'm going to get ignored. But watch this. 
both John and Steve. John from uh, Rad Cruisers and Steve from EBI both tell me they've had phone calls of guys looking for camshafts because the shop or a shop phoned them looking for a camshaft and they knew which whose Jeep or Toyota sorry Toyota not Jeep who don't get the Toyota guys mad I heard that them hippies are weird anyway um, that uh, they were working on somebody's Land Cruiser and they cranked a bearing cap down on the cam and popped the cam into two pieces which no bueno Okay, I'm not torquing, I'm just kind of snugging. So I'm really not cranking hard here. I mean, if they won't move with a little bit of a touch, then I'm not moving them. Not following a pattern, I'm just tightening these ones now. Because I've already followed the pattern to get them down this far, so. There we go. So. <sighs> I've ordered a shim. I've got it on a cardboard list here that is now not visible to me. It's because I'm standing on it. For number four, I've ordered a shim for one, two, three, four. Intake is still a little bit looser than I would like. I've also got the tool coming so that I can change the shim with this up and get the shim out. So as I said, let's really paste this with some lube. I didn't clean the top of the lifter buckets off or anything, so there is still lube there. I am just going over the top, probably. But I'd rather have way too much of this than not enough and cook something. If you know what I mean. And I think most of you do. In Colt cams, you can see how dark this cam is. The cam should be a nice silvery color like raw metal. He ground the cam, and like you see in the journals, they're a nice silver. He ground the cam at Colt cams and threw the cam up because one of the lobes was a little bit weird. I gotta be careful turning this over now because the cylinders are at the top dead center. So I can't just ram jam this thing in there. So he he trued everything out. There. See it's hitting a valve. Valve is hitting. So I'm gonna back it back off. Come back the other way. It's gonna hit again. I know that already. There it is again. I'm stopping again. And we'll go back the other way a little bit. And we're going to leave it. Because I don't know where it is. So if I have to, I can always roll the motor over, get the pistons to go down in their cylinders. And then get the cam into the right position. Because this needs to be at TDC. That needs to be at TDC. Top dead center, and right now, this one is right here. So, we're not far off a of TDC here. So, I can move this around and put it at TDC or roughly where TDC is, which should be right about there. So, now, crossing fingers, I've got the cam at TDC, the crank TDC. Hopefully, when we put it together. Everything's jigging and jagging at the right time. Hopefully. Cross his fingers, spits in an eye, phones a, a, the, the, the bone man, woman bone man, female bone person. I don't know what they want to be called. I mean, whatever terminology they want to go by. And we've got everything lined up perfect. Hoping. Praying. Fuck, I don't, really don't want to have to rebuild this twice. So, anyway, cam is in, not torqued. Heads on, not torqued. Torque wrench is up there. 
that's a later time. I just didn't want this thing to sit here. I wanted to try the dowel pin set that I bought. And for a PZ, if you're really, really, really stuck, because some of these parts for an 8Z and PZ can be difficult to get. So you'll see a dowel pin there. I went over to a company called Mopac and I bought all this stuff there. So you see, there's a really thin dowel pin right there. So you see a really small dowel pin. There's one there and there's one there. Those ones are too small. These ones, they don't fit super tight, but they don't rattle around in there like those ones there would. These ones are pretty close. And then, of course, I don't know what those are for on a, their first Chevy 350, but you do get two nice, brand new wood rough keys, which, the end of that thing, I'll probably use one of these wood rough keys, as long as they're the same. And I'll change them out. No idea what these guys are for, though. So, I'm not worried about it. Or that one but I got an extra two dowel pins they work perfect I, I, I was a shot in the dark just trying to buy it 20 bucks is all I paid for that so I'm pretty happy that I'm not waiting you know another three weeks for dowel pins now I gotta get the little bastards back into the bag and yeah uh, I don't know what are you looking at here? Get them back in the bag here. Probably going to drop them on the floor. Come on. Nope. Hey, get in there, you little son of a... Oh, come on. There we go. So I got two dowel pins now. Spares. I'll probably take them over either to... Uh, well, John, you live way up in Kamloops. You're like a three-hour drive. Four-hour drive thereabouts. Uh, but I got them. So I can either... If Steve needs them, I got two dowel pins. That's handy. And this this is what I bought right here. Nope, that just says comp cams. There's no there's no part number on here. Nothing. It's from comp cams, that's who I bought it. Well I bought it from the parts guys. But there's there's no part number on here. Let's see if there's something on the instruction. Oh yes, right there. Part number 233, GMC 283, 327. The dowel pin is so close. Like, so close. It's not sloppy loose. I mean, you guys see me put the head in, and you see me wiggle the head, and the head's not bouncing around, so that looks pretty good to me. I mean, it may not be 120 thousandths of a percent, but... You don't need the dowel pins anyway, so close is close, and if close is going to work, and close is where we're going. Someone quote me and tell me I'm, well, don't quote me, Jesus, please don't quote me, I don't want to be wrong, but if I'm wrong, tell me, because right now, the way she's looking, cam in, heads on, uh, we're going to put the injectors in here, they're over there, I can, I think I see them, uh, and run the injector lines. We'll try and get the, uh, I think I can do that without having the intake manifold on. No, I can't. The intake manifold has to be on, but I'm going to do that while I have the rest open. I'll put the rocker cover on so I don't bash anything off the cam lobe, uh, and I'll run that. But I'm going to do the torque on these first. Put the intake manifold on, and then we'll... Throw her, throw her on there. Yeah. Oh, and when I put this thing on a long time ago, I didn't put the O-ring. Well, this time, I put the O-ring. I didn't record it setting the gears and the timing in the front cover here. Sorry. Just remember that the gears have timing marks and you have to be able to see them. That means the front cover has to be completely off. And then sometimes the bearings are stuck and they won't move. Can't remember if this is loose or not. Yes, it is. The can the, the injection pump is still loose so you can set the timing. Um, that'll be a Steve over at EBI. And we'll film them doing it if he'll let me. But I'm pretty happy. You got the head on. Yeah. That's awesome.